Yeah, it's, it's quite ex exciting to be here on the 17th uh, International Conference on Malignant Lymphoma. Uh, we are seeing quite a few exciting trial results that are being presented and this, the common theme seems to be in all of them is we are moving away from a traditional chemotherapy strategy or what we call as chemotherapy free strategy. Um, and we have seen uh, the results from a uh, quite a number of uh, CD20 bispecific T cell engaging um, uh, therapies and also CD19 CAR Ts. Uh, uh, this year we are presenting the interim, early interim results of TNB486, which is a novel CD3, CD19 bispecific T cell engager in patients with relapsed refractory non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I will be presenting the early interim results in the uh, results of the follicular lymphoma cohort. As we know, follicular lymphoma is an indolent disease with an excellent prognosis. However, for a group of patients, the disease is characterized by uh, frequent relapses with progressive shortening of their um, uh, responses and duration of response with each successive lines of therapy. Um, and this uh, group is defined truly by the patients who meet POD24 criteria, which are the patients who relapse within 24 months of an intensive chemoimmunotherapy strategy in the first line, or patients who relapse with CD20 negative disease, or patients who have three or more prior lines of therapy. We have seen the recent CD19 CAR-T approval for this group of patients. We have seen CD20 by specific T cell engagers. One of the challenges with CD19 CAR-Ts is they are you know, quite uh, tough therapies and challenging for our patients because they have to travel to academic centers. Um, CD20 targeting by specific T cell engagers, they are quite promising. And uh, one thing that sets them apart from CAR-T therapies is they are readily available and, and, and be ready to be infused uh, as soon as we are ready to start a treatment. CD19 is, uh, CD19 by specific T cell engager, what we call as TNB486, is coming along the same pathway, but instead of CD20, this is targeting CD19. So it has a unique anatomy where it binds to the CD19 of a B lymphoma cell with quite significant affinity, where thereby bringing the B lymphoma cell to the T cell to which it binds uh, through a, a noble CD3 site. Um, uh, compared to the CD20 by specific T cell engagers, we hypothesize and proven through preclinical studies as well, that it binds to the T cell with much lower affinity or what I consider to be more physiologic binding to the T cell, leading to its activation and thereby kind of bridging the immune system and the B cell together and leading to uh, cancer cell death. Uh, we are presenting the early interim results uh, of TNB486 as a monotherapy in patients with relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma for adults who has been failed by two or more prior lines of therapy. Uh, the study design was a, a single uh, arm uh, multi uh, center phase one study. Um, and the key eligibility criteria included follicular lymphoma histologies grade one through 3A. The study did require CD19 expression, what we define as 50% um, expression either through immunohistochemistry or flow cytometry. And uh, patients who are included were patients who had two or more prior lines of therapy. Uh, the administration of the drug was intravenous uh, and it's given uh, every two weeks. And for patients who are achieving a complete remission status, there's an option to uh, kind of space it out to every four weeks, which is something very important when we try to build out these trials to make it more patient friendly and convenience be taken into account for our patients. Um, when we looked at the results, um, we have uh, enrolled 17 patients so far, so it's still in its early course, but we are seeing uh, quite significant high responses for the patients who were treated so far. Out of the 17 patients, all patients were available for safety, and 15 patients we were able to look at the efficacy. And we are seeing an overall response rate of 91% for uh, a group of patients who are able to get to a target dose of 2.4 milligram and a bell. So the study has multiple dose escalation cohorts, and we are now getting into what we call a step-up dosing or single step-up or double step-up dosing, where we start out with a very low dose, and then it gets to the target dose over a period of three weeks. So that's a common theme um, with a lot of the uh, bispecific T cell engagers. That's in, an, in, an, in a way to mitigate some of the cytokine release syndrome or neurotoxicity that's kind of a class effect with a, a, a significant number of these T cell engaging uh, therapies. Um, the few key things about these uh, responses were they were quite durable, uh, at least uh, from the follow-up we have which, with a median follow-up of eight months. The six-month progression-free survival was 91%. Um, and there's only one patient who relapsed uh, out of the uh, patients who've been treated so far. Um, when we looked at the side effect profile, the drug appears to have a predictable onset of cytokine release syndrome, happens in slightly more uh, over 50% of the patients, um, and majority of them being grade one, grade two. 
So they appear to be quite manageable, quite predictable onset, you know, turn around uh, with uh, conservative medical management with the use of tocilizumab or steroids, and none of them um, happening beyond first cycle. We also seen some neurotoxicity events, what we call as immune effector cell associated neurotoxicity. Um, and uh, this was about one out of five patients, again, majority being grade one, grade two, and very predictable onset, quick turnaround and resolution of symptoms without leaving any long-term circulate. Interestingly, we noted some cytopenias with, with the first cycle. Um, uh, it could be related to the cell margination, um, and this seems to be quite transient happening within the first cycle, and none happening again beyond the first cycle. So in, in summary, we are seeing um, quite a, a good potential for this um, TNB486, uh, even though it's early in its course, there's a lot to learn about this drug in terms of how we dose these therapies and how we sequence these with other therapies. Uh, but we are seeing a very promising uh, agent and we are looking forward to enroll more patients so that we can present a larger cohort in similar venues in the future. Um, so we hope that this will turn into a powerful weapon in our fight against um, some of these high risk follicle lymphoma patients.